the creation of writing is a discovery equal to the invention of a flint, a wheel, a bow. And just as non-trivial, since the alphabet encodes information in two stages. First, individual graphic symbols are deciphered as speech sounds, and only then, combining into words, the sounds convey the meaning of composite constructions. This imposes a number of difficulties on deciphering forgotten scripts, and therefore the history of the origin and development of the alphabet keeps many secrets. To date, not all ancient writings have been deciphered. Moreover, sometimes illegible texts appear in our time. Proto-Sinai script clearly reflects the language of the Semitic group only the language itself remains unknown to this day. Even in the Paleolithic era, people were able to identify an image with an object. The hunting scene immortalized by an ancient artist on a rock is a kind of narrative. Even the correspondence of primitive hunters is known, carried out with the help of drawings on bones. But this was accidental, since the transmission of information required exceptional ingenuity. Writing received a serious impetus to development in Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt, when priests and courtiers collecting and distributing natural taxes needed to process large amounts of data. Initially, it was a set of standard pictograms denoting goods and numbers. But soon pictograms began to be used as ideograms, hieroglyphs, that is, symbols denoting abstract or composite concepts. Thus, the ancient Egyptian symbol mountains eventually began to be read as foreign countries. Hieroglyphs were suitable not only for bookkeeping, but also for composing religious texts, chronicles, philosophical treatises, but the possibilities of writing were still limited. Writing became more complicated, for example, hieroglyphs used to convey monosyllabic words began to be used as syllabic signs within composite structures. But there were too many syllables, because in most of them, in addition to the vowel, there were two or even three consonant sounds. The number of signs could be drastically reduced, leaving only those that denote syllables from a vowel and a consonant, and including symbols that convey additional consonants. After that, the thought inevitably came that it was quite possible to write only with these new signs. So there was an alphabet without vowels, similar to Phoenician or Arabic. Lowercase characters for voicing, and then the introduction of lowercase letters for vowels is the last, final stage. So, we have considered the systematized works. Thanks to some general principles, almost all of them are decipherable in one way or another, some thanks to artifacts such as the Rosetta Stone, others thanks to long and painstaking mathematical work, like Mayan hieroglyphs. But there are many scenarios that do not fit into a coherent and logical picture of the world. Tertarian tablets made of unbaked clay date back to 5500 BC. A typical example is the Tertarian inscriptions found in Transylvania as well as other sign-covered tablets and shards left by the pre-Indo-European Vinca culture. This proto-civilization was associated with the peoples who lived on the territory of modern Ukraine and Moldova and occupied the Balkans in the 5th-8th millennia BC. The signs left by the Vincians are very numerous and do not resemble the usual Neolithic painting. It was possible to identify 210 recurring characters, reduced to 30 main types. It resembles not just a letter, but a consonantal alphabet abugida, in which the spelling of the letter varies slightly depending on the vowel contained in the syllable. The perfection of Tertarian writing is indirectly evidenced by the simple form of signs reduced to five graphic elements. It is known that the longer the alphabet is used, the fewer details that can be dispensed with remain in the outlines of the letters. This means that representatives of the Vinci culture have been forming their writings for more than a hundred years. Most likely, Tertarian tablets are accounting documents. All known abugids, for example, the Ethiopian script are either natural in modern times, or are valid ordinary syllabic alphabets in which syllables with case detection have no similarity in writing, as its hieroglyphs were not required, from the emergence of these syllabic signs. And even there is a syllabic alphabet. Nothing has been found in the Balkans. Most of the inscriptions left by the Vincians were most likely of economic importance. They are made on the bottoms of pots and contain combs, numbers. But why would barbarians, much more savage than the European tribes that threaten Rome, make any notes on pots? In a peasant subsistence economy, there is no need to keep written inventory records. It would be strange if the Vincians did not give up such a useless activity. In fact, they've given up on it. The tablets, numerous at the dawn of Vincent's history, at the end of the 6th millennium BC, are becoming increasingly rare over the next millennium despite the fact that the culture itself is rapidly developing, 
it was during this period that the first ore mines in Europe appeared in the Balkans. In the third millennium, when the Vinci culture reaches its heyday. However, remaining backward in comparison with the civilizations of the Middle East, there are no signs of writing anymore. No less interesting are the archaeological finds made in Hunan province, central China. Representatives of the Neolithic Pelagon culture, who lived in this area in the 7th millennium BC, left behind writings, Jiahu writing, surprisingly similar to Chinese characters, and not to the ancient ones that appeared in the 2nd millennium BC, but to the hieroglyphs used by modern Chinese. In fact, great riddles are solved very simply. Now there are 87,000 hieroglyphs, ten times more than in the Chinese dictionary of the beginning of the era. Even with such a goal in mind, it is hardly possible to invent a sign that would not be similar to any of the modern Chinese characters. And the Palagans, of course, did not face such a task. There is only one reason to consider the winch icons and the Jiahu inscription as writing, they remind us of this. But external similarity is a shaky ground for hypotheses. Most likely, the symbols had a ritual or, at most, a proto written meaning, an ideographic designation of the simplest concepts and descriptions. It is worth noting that most unencrypted scripts are ideographic, that is, proto alphabetic. Mistec writing, modern Mexico, ancient Canaanite writing, modern Palestine, Sinai writing, they can be enumerated almost endlessly. Kipu is a sample of Mesoamerican pre hieroglyphic writing, deciphered only partially. Numerical and partially color coding systems are understandable, semantic, verbal, and still elude modern scientists. The inconvenience of hieroglyphic writing is no secret to anyone, it is much more difficult to study than alphanumeric writing. And it is also quite difficult to use because of some bulkiness, plus, writing requires smooth material, as well as a lot of patience and accuracy. It is impossible to cut hieroglyphs, say, on birch bark, the heterogeneity of the bark will distort the shape of the sign, and it will become unreadable. Whether it's letters. Their shape is simple and even with large deviations remains recognizable, and if one of the letters is illegible, the rest will most likely allow you to read the word. The first phonetic signs appeared quite early. An example is the writing of the Aztecs, who did not even have real hieroglyphs yet but ordinary pictograms could be read as puzzles, the so-called lomograms. Wanting to convey a syllable, a medieval Mexican drew an object whose name began with this syllable, and in such an amazing way the Aztecs wrote poetry. It is worth noting here that, of course, when the Aztecs were just learning to write, there was already a developed civilization in Europe, but the Proto-American peoples lagged far behind in development, and therefore we can well call their writing early. Mistec writing is typical pictographs, they can be attributed to writing, not to art, because they contain repeated symbols. Whether the syllabic alphabet will eventually be replaced by the alphabetic alphabet depends on the language. Different people use different numbers of syllables, from 80 to 6,000. Hieroglyphs can continue to be used by inertia for some time. So, in Japan, kanji, hieroglyphs, and two syllabic alphabets, hiragana and katakana are used in parallel. As a rule, a Japanese person simultaneously uses all three types of hieroglyphs, plus Latin and Arabic numerals, combining alphabets according to rather confusing rules, but any of the can is quite enough to write in Japanese. But kanji in its pure form is not suitable for this, since hieroglyphs convey only roots, but not suffixes. Oddly enough, most of the hieroglyphic systems have been deciphered. Most often this is due to the fact that hieroglyphs rarely disappear completely from the language, Japan and China are examples of this. They are deformed, but based on the same principle as 3,000 years ago. The Phaistos disc found in Crete is a sample of writing, presumably in the Minoan language. The absence of other sources reduces the chances of decryption to zero. A typical example of unencrypted hieroglyphs is Cretan hieroglyphic writing. The Cretan Minoan civilization existed around the 19th and 15th centuries BC and had so many different scripts that it is still not possible to systematize them. Initially, the symbols were pictographic in nature, but later, apparently, a standardized set of signs stood out, which developed into the Cretan linear letter A. The problem of deciphering both Cretan hieroglyphs and the linear letter A is known, very few sources have been preserved. Seals, ritual tablets, pots with accounting data and the famous stone altar from Malia. It is not known whether, for example, the Minoans had fiction. There are 15 ideograms on the Archilochary Acts, which relate to the Minoan language, unknown to science. 
Interestingly, in Crete, in addition to hieroglyphic writing, linear A and linear B, the latter was deciphered, we do not touch it, at least two more samples of writing were found that are not related to those mentioned. One of them is the legendary Fest disc. Hieroglyphic inscriptions on it are the oldest text known to science, and there are no other examples of such writing in nature, which causes a huge amount of controversy and doubt. The writing of the Indus Valley is mainly represented on seals. The inscriptions are short and clear, but it is not yet possible to decipher them. It was used by Proto-Dravidians, the early population of India. This writing appeared in the area of modern Punjab. Despite the fact that more than 4,000 sources have come down to our days, the deciphering of Proto-Dravidian writing is at an early stage. It is still not very clear whether this letter is hieroglyphic or syllabic. It should also be added that the most famous examples of unencrypted hieroglyphic writing are the Rongo, Rongo tablets. These are mysterious writings of the Aborigines of Easter Island, they contain about 800 characters, which, presumably, are hieroglyphs, but could just as well be anything else. Writing in ordinary, mediocre modern fantasy is almost necessarily runes. In a narrow sense, the ancient Germanic alphabet, more precisely, a group of alphabets, Futhark is called runes. In the broadest sense, runes are a set of simple signs that are convenient for carving wood and stone. From the 5th century BC, Turkic runes were known, later Bulgarian and Hungarian runic alphabets appeared, which remained in use until the 11th century. Some archaeological finds indicate, although far from indisputable, the use of runes by the Slavs in the 9th to 11th centuries. Outwardly similar to Futhark, all these alphabets had nothing in common with it either in origin or in the reading of symbols. The name runes comes from the old Germanic word mystery, escape. And indeed, there are many mysteries connected with the writing of the Vikings, because the appearance of the alphabet in Scandinavia, and a perfect alphabet in which the sign corresponds to a sound, not a syllable or a word, dates back to the first century of our era. At the same time, the Scandinavians almost did not use writing, the Vikings did not even find runic documents for economic purposes, and runes most often did not have numerical values. Ancient Germanic myths, heroic epics and sagas were first transferred to paper only by Christian monks, although their performers and writers, skalds, were experts in runes. Even more strange is that the runic alphabet was not really suitable for the old Germanic language. There were only twenty, for senior runes fewer than sounds. Later in Scandinavia, runes denoting unusual sounds were excluded, and the number of signs was reduced to a dozen and a half. As a result, the same symbol served to record several sounds, and each word received several reading options. To date, all runic alphabets have been deciphered, it remains only to understand their origins. Where did the semi-savage northerners get ready-made writing, but they did not need it at all and even if, it seems, it was intended for a foreign language? That's the secret. For example, a system very similar to runes is an unencrypted Isic letter. The most famous example of the Isik script is 26 hieroglyphs on a silver bowl found in the Isik mound, Kazakhstan, near Almada. Externally, the signs are very similar to the ancient Turkic runic script or the Orkinoenesi script, which later gave rise to the Hungarian and Bulgarian runes, but the latter was deciphered, but the Isik runes remain a mystery to researchers to this day. In addition to Kazakhstan, similar signs were found on dishes of the 1st, 6th centuries AD excavated in Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Afghanistan. Interestingly, the Isik script most likely originated from a simplified version of the Indian Harashta script used in the 3rd century BC, 4th century AD. Is it possible that the Germanic peoples adopted runic rules and laws from such remote southern peoples? This is not to be excluded. If the Isik letter can be deciphered, we will get closer to the answer to this question. Most likely, the origin of the runes is Scandinavian. These are tamgi, magical signs that bring good luck, protect from evil forces and serve as the emblem of the clan. In any case, it was precisely such functions that the runes continued to perform until the Christianization of the North, while other peoples did not have letters of such power. But the idea of using runes as letters is most likely borrowed from the Romans. From them, the Germans learned that signs can convey the sounds of speech. Therefore, when runes were invented, it was not at all implied that their numbers and names should correspond to the sounds of the language. There is another interesting group of unencrypted alphabets that are not related to ancient times. The most famous is the manuscript acquired in 1912 by the Lithuanian collector of antiquities Wilfred Voynich from the Jesuits. 
The 240-page parchment manuscript contains numerous illustrations and text written using an alphabet that has never been used anywhere else. Assuming that he was dealing with an ordinary medieval cipher, Voynich sent copies to the best cryptologists. A century has passed, but only one thing has been established with certainty, the text of the manuscript is not encrypted at all. It's just written in an unknown language. Modern graphology, statistical analysis and radioisotope dating methods have allowed us to learn a lot. It was proved that the manuscript was not a fake, that it appeared in the 15th century in northern Italy, that the book from beginning to end came from the pen of one person who perfectly knew the language in which it was written. It was even determined that this language is not European in its structure, in many ways it is similar to the East Asian languages, Chinese, Tibetan, Manchurian, but at the same time it has features inherent in the Semitic family. The alphabet, which does not reveal a kinship with any other, is also amazing. There are no numbers or anything similar to numbers in the text, there are no punctuation marks. In total, more than a hundred letters are used, of which thirty occur constantly and obviously convey sounds, and several dozen more occur two or three times throughout the manuscript, but are used as part of words in the same way as others. There is no language in which there are thirty common sounds and three times as many very rare ones. The illustrations also do not add clarity. At first glance, the manuscript is a typical 15th century desk reference for a herbalist, doctor, astrologer, and alchemist. Its pages are covered with images of plants and constellations, drawings, diagrams, and graphs. But only some plants were difficult to identify, while most of the drawings baffled botanists. These plants are either fictional or composite. For example, a flower is taken from one plant a stem from another, and leaves from a third. And many of the constellations depicted in the manuscript cannot be seen in our sky. The only recognizable symbols in the manuscript, apart from drawings of naked women, are the signs of the zodiac, exactly as they were depicted in Europe in the 15th and 16th centuries. Only here the year, according to the author, lasts 360, not 365 days. What kind of astrology can we talk about if a different calendar is used? Attempts to solve the problem on the fly, declaring the manuscript an encrypted diary of Roger Bacon, were unsuccessful. Science cannot explain how a British scientist could become the author of a book that appeared a century and a half after his death, and how Bacon's authorship explains the strangeness of the manuscript. Later, several more hypotheses were put forward attributing the manuscript to the pen of famous alchemists of the Middle Ages, including Jacob Horchitsky, Johann Marcus Martzi, and Raphael Nishovsky. The most stable version is the version about Korchitsky, the personal physician of Emperor Rudolf II, since the surname Korchitsky is found in older inscriptions on handwritten paper. Many of his sheets are palimpsests, that is, recycled paper. But with the same success, an unknown author could have taken something signed by Horsiki, brought out the old text and written his strange manuscript. The Voynich manuscript has no rational explanation. It can be assumed that a native of Asia, who belonged to a tribe that did not have a written language and which has not survived to this day, so his language is not listed either among the living or among the dead, reached Europe and many years later wrote a reference book using a specially invented alphabet for this purpose. But why didn't he use the Latin alphabet? Why did he draw non-existent plants and constellations? Why did he write at all, knowing that no one would be able to read his carefully thought-out work? There is no answer.